All right, guys, we've just arrived in Nan and we have picked ourselves up some scooters. The car is back there, which Rupert will be taking, and we're about to head out to the national park. Nan has for a long time been on my bucket list of places to visit in Thailand. It hosts an incredible array of fascinating species me and the team have never seen before. We began the trip with a two hour bike ride through some of the most beautiful montane roads Thailand has to offer. The weather was great and I had high hopes we'd cruise a snake on the road before even arriving. Moments later, something caught my eye. All right, guys, I just saw a snake shooting across here. I don't see exactly where he went because I was actually filming while I saw it. But I'm pretty sure this was perhaps some Sibinophis. I don't, you see, I don't think he's managed to cross this concrete barrier. So he's, he must be somewhere in here. So if I can carefully fish through all of this, I might be able to get him out. I'm pretty confident that he should still be somewhere in here. I really am not sure exactly where he shot in though. But it must have been somewhere along this concrete barrier, so I say I've got a chance. I guess my only chance is if I can somehow manage to flush him out if he hasn't cleared the barrier while I was turning. <sighs> what a shame. Looks like he got away. Alright, we've just arrived at the accommodation, had dinner, and we're about to head out. Harry and Rupert already just jetted off on the scooter and in the car, and I've got my scooter. So the plan for tonight is we're going to do the first part of the night road cruising, a really good area, just up and down. So that's the whole reason we brought three vehicles, the car, two bikes, so that each of us can cruise a different area at the same time to maximize our chances. So let's go. Alright guys, it is literally absolutely freezing out here but I did just cruise the first snake of the night and I believe this should be I'm not sure though could be a lifer for me up here you get Trimersaurus popiorum as well as Gumprecti which I think this might be because you can see it has those really yellow eyes, unlike any popes I've ever seen. Don't even have a hook on me. I'm gonna try and move this little dude off the road with my shoe. If he'll climb on that and stay. All right, well, I'm reasonably sure that this is Trimorosaurus gumprecti. Is a lifer for me, but it's a very small one and I've heard they're not all that rare here, so I'm gonna take a bit of a risk and let him go without taking any photos. Um, but yeah, come on little sir, off you go. All right, not even a few minutes later, next snake, another lifer for me. Man, I really love herping out here in the north where every snake almost is a lifer. Have a look at this cute little slug snake. Wow, look at the color of that thing. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna hold on to this little guy for a moment to take some photos. Have a look at that though. What a beautiful snake. All right, next snake. Not a lifer for once. This is Piraeus macularius. A pretty, well I used to think rare species, but I've seen quite a lot of them this year. This is a very nice looking individual though. They get much larger to the very similar Piraeus margaritaforus. But yeah, just another species of slug eating snake. This one's really big actually. Neat. Come on, go away. Oh, and these. Expensive. What these guys will sometimes do is they will fake strike 
but they won't actually open their mouth because these guys feed on slugs and snails and they do not have appropriate dentition to actually bite people but they will act as if they do but they'll just headbutt you cute little guys all right i've just caught up with harold he's here as well and literally as i caught up to him i saw this big snake on the road well reasonably big biggest snake of today and it is i thought at first it would be another gump but this is Pope's Pit Viper, and a really huge male. Look at the size of that thing. And it is absolutely freezing out here. I'm wearing two hoodies on top of each other, and I'm still really cold. Anyway, we're just going to move this guy off the road. He was going in that direction, so I'm going to move him into that direction. Hello, sir. Ooh, a little defensive there. Have a look at this beautiful large adult male Trimurosaurus popiorum or Pope's Pit Viper. Ah, I can hardly even speak because my whole like face is really cold. You can see how he has that bright red line on his head. That is typical of males in this species. Anyway, he is very nice and I'm very cold. I'm just gonna move him off the road here. All right, just got another snake. He's already moved off the road while I was setting up my camera. Crap, I think I lost it. Wait, I see movement here. Yes, there he is. All right, and it is a nice, large green cat snake. Ooh, and quite a bitey one too. This one's very dull. Look at the color on this thing. Oh wow, and he's got Wow, he's not in the best of shape. I think he's approaching shed. But also, look at his eyes. They are covered in some kind of gunk. Okay, well, the left one is fine. But that right eye is definitely not as it should be. Seems healthy, though. Like, his physical condition doesn't look great, but he's not skinny or anything, so... Maybe he's just approaching shed and... That one side of the eye made me think it was way worse than it was, because he is definitely in shed. But the other eye, as you can see, looks totally fine. And the unique thing is, about these northern Boiga cyanea, that it's more or less the same snake as in the south, but the northern ones actually have black eyes, and the southern ones have those really light silvery eyes. Anyway, seems to be... Good night for snakes, so I'm not going to spend too much time mucking about with this, because every minute is valuable. Just going to... Ooh. Very defensive little sir. Probably, probably a her at this size. She's pretty big. Really in unique coloring on this one, though. Not like most of the other Boiga cyanea that you see. Anyway. To help this little girl... Poor guy, off the road, right back where she was going. Come on. Get on the tree. Amazing. Hit the road. All right, can you believe it? I, the other cyanea was literally just past that yellow sign. I had just started driving, was picking up speed again, and immediately, Another large Boiga cyanea. This one's a bit smaller though. And not in shed. And not with damage on the eyes. Now you can see a much better example of what these eyes are supposed to look like. See these northern ones just have those jet black eyes, which is really unique actually. Also, since Boiga cyanea is common in the hobby, you'll notice if you've seen pictures of them in captivity, how they never have these black eyes, which this locality here has. Which is very interesting. This one was going... Wait, actually he was going this way. But then when he saw me he did a 180. So... Let's move this guy... Ooh. Off as well. Oh, don't you bite me, sir. No, no, no. Come on. Off you go. Alright. Going good so far. If I can keep finding snakes at this rate... I will be very happy. 
and my god is it cold. I'm literally here wearing two jackets. My hands are like pink. I can hardly move my fingers. And it's lightly starting to rain. But it's all worth it. All right, have a look at this. I just pulled over at some street lamps and underneath these street lights, wow, look at this beetle. That is absolutely insane. I don't know, it's not focusing very well on camera because of the dark, but it has like a load of huge horns on its head. And I mean, this thing is, this thing is big. Some kind of rhinoceros beetle. I feel like I've seen exactly this species being kept in captivity before. There's actually another one right over here, another male with an, wow, even bigger facial horn. Narwhals, narwhals. Anyway, these things are absolutely ridiculous. I love beetles. Always since I was a kid, I've really loved beetles. I don't know if any of you guys knew that about me, but I'm a big beetle fan. <laughs> it's unfortunate though, these street lights cause them to get attracted to the road and then they land on the road and I'm sure many of them get run over. Oop. I'm probably gonna take these to a part of the road that doesn't have street lights so they don't just come right back here. And another street lamp victim beetle. This appears to be some kind of Dag beetle, question mark? Despite my love for beetles, I'm not very knowledgeable on them. My guess would be that that's some kind of stag beetle. Very pretty, love that clean black on him. Oh, oh, oh. I do want to stop him from crawling on me though, because I don't doubt that this guy would pack quite a nasty pinch. Alright, so I was just driving down the road and I spotted Rupert bossing around up in the trees on the side of the road and he got one of our main targets for the area. Oh. Ooh, it is bitey. Yeah, look at my hand. This is from the... This is Goniosoma ceruleum. What's the common name? Uh, I should blue, really... Blue-eyed bamboo rat snake. All right, so the yeah. blue-eyed bamboo rat snake. I should really learn my common name some more. Wow, that is a nice snake. Harold will be over the moon. This is literally, I think Harold's this is his favorite snake in the area. It's his number one target in the whole of Thailand. That's what I know. And I think his second favorite snake, <laughs> <laughs> his second favorite snake ever. Yeah, in the world. It's got sharp teeth for a little guy. I just saw a, like a green snake sleeping with this uh, like kind of greenish venter. I was thinking Dendrolaphus vogeli, no, too thick. Really didn't expect it to be this. I have never heard of one being found sleeping at night in Thailand. Real, real surprise. Beautiful snake. As beautiful as it is, I still don't get why it's his second all-time favorite snake. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no arguing, it's a nice snake, but I could think of a million snakes that are better. Let's not hate on it too much, though. No, it, it, let's be honest, it is really nice. I think it during the really daytime nice. it would come up even nicer. How visible the... its, it's pupils are super, like... Wait, let me, try and get a, right now. let me try and get a zoom in on that. Yeah, yeah, you can see like a little bit of blue. Not very blue though. They're not looking as blue if as I If I discovered yeah. the species, I would not have named it blue-eyed anything. <laughs> I think that's just the main distinguishing feature from the, the Indian one. I was like, shit. All right, Harry just radioed in that he's got... Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, wow. Wow. Huge one. Where was it? On the road? Right outside the temple. <laughs> that is exactly where boss man told me, he, like Karinya told me he got his. Under literally the directly outside. I did wow. not know what it was when I stopped. Like, it just, I just saw like... The first know. thing I would have thought was slug snake. Harry just did find the species we were looking for. This is the red bamboo rat snake. Well, they go by various common names, don't they? Yeah, that's the normal one. Yeah. Very nice snake. Lifer for all of us but Rupert, who's already abandoned us and driven home. <laughs> so one really cool thing about these guys is, I mean, well, you can see how vibrant and beautiful they are now. But you'll be shocked to know that juveniles are even more pretty and vibrant. They, in fact, have a tricolor banding. So they'll go yellow, or orange, black, then red, then back to back. 
feel like a lot of people will recognize these from the pet trade. Yeah, so these are incredibly popular in, in the pet trade. Not really sure why. I know, obviously, they're very pretty, but they're not great pets. Just because they, they're kind of semi-fossorial. And, yeah, they spend a lot of time under the dirt in, the, in captivity. But you can see why they're popular, because just the beauty of them. And there's a load of different subspecies. Um, I think there's about four alone in Thailand. And each one of those has different looking juveniles and different looking adults. But yeah, this is a, a lovely one. You can see it's lost most of its banding. This is a very large individual. But it's still got this kind of twin stripe running yeah, down really the tail. Yeah, I like how towards the tail that it goes from banded to striped. And like uh, kind of Oligodon and Calliophus, these guys, when they feel threatened, will twirl up their tail. Uh, but they won't kind of raise it up like they do. They just kind of put it into a nice coil. Almost more like Oligodon do. Although yeah. some Oligodon raise their tail as well. Yeah, some Oligodon what a lovely snake I'm so happy that we found this <laughs> Harry the rat snake guy colubrids all the way oh. it is a pretty snake why is it moving off so slow shoo <laughs> alright it's starting to rain let's go alright check this out guys this is something really unique actually this is a skink but one of the aquatic skinks. I don't know exactly which species right now, so I'll overlay that right now. But yeah, it doesn't have the smooth skin that's typical of skinks. Like if you've ever felt a skink before, you'll know they're really smooth, but this one is almost like rough. Really interesting texture on this one. And you can see he looks a bit different too. Almost reminds me somewhat of like a crocodile skink, but like a mini, not as cool version. Yeah, very interesting little dude. These guys are apparently aquatic. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, look at him swim, like a fish. <laughs> All right, check this out. I don't get excited about frogs too often, but this is really cool. This is Fee's gliding frog and it's actually the largest species of flying frog in the world, and I would assume that this doesn't look as big on camera, but this thing is massive. Look at the size of its hand holding my thumb there. The suction pods are like almost the size of my pinky nail. Each suction pod on the end of the finger is pretty much the size of my fingernail. What a huge frog. They used to be Racophorus fee, but Harry tells me the genus has actually been changed for these, and I don't actually know off by heart what the current valid scientific name is. Something Fee. Anyway, look at the size of this thing. They are flying frogs, so they do have these... Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They do have these webbed feet. You can see very well if you zoom in on my hand there, those webbing between the toes which they actually use to glide from tree to tree, but this frog has such a large body mass that they're actually not very good at gliding. They're very derpy as well, uncoordinated, and they pretty much just flop around. As you can see, he keeps trying to jump, and I'm able to catch him mid-air before he lands on something. So, very uncoordinated big frog. Definitely cool though. I've seen a number of flying frog species this year, but I have to say this is by far my favorite just because of how absolutely massive this thing is. And he's probably going to jump straight onto the lens in a moment. Let's, uh, let's put him back before he does anything. Before he does anything he'll regret. Wow, look at the size of these suction cups. <gasps> Sticky toe pads. Correct. They are not suction cups, they are sticky toe pads, but look at the size of this on my fingernail. This has to be one, and it's almost blue. It's almost bluish, actually. Anyway, I did wet my hands before grabbing him, but they're starting to get dry, so I'm going to just put him back. You'll see what I mean, that they, they glide, but they're not very graceful while doing so. <laughs> Alright guys, we already got a juvenile Trimorosaurus gumprecti, or Gumprect's green pit viper on the road the other night, but here, finally, we have a large adult female. 
and just see her poking her head out from behind the leaf there. Quite different head shape, clearly visible now than Pope's in the adult. But the juvenile, same as this one, still had that bright yellow eye, unlike Pope's pit viper. Gonna probably get her out, because I'm not sure if we're gonna find another adult female. Let me just see if I can get this branch out the way. Right, Rupert was telling me that these are a lot better behaved on average than popes are. And I don't know if that was true for the juvenile, because we didn't really do anything with it. As you can see, she is showing no defensive behavior. I feel like the head is way more somehow like blocky than Pope's. Pope's have somewhat of an elongated head. This girl has a very squarish head on the front, and I've... Ooh, what was that? Maybe she also had a wasp, because I've got something buzzing around. Anyway, she's looking at me a bit funny right now. Oh! It's not a wasp, it's a massive stick insect. Not good, not good. <laughs> Alright, he gone. She is actually very calm, a lot calmer than I initially even would have expected. As you can see, she is... quite relaxed. Just trying to climb on me rather than... bite. And see how she's digging her head down, and that's actually not in a defensive way, that's just because she's trying to get a better grip. It is a little bit discomforting sometimes when vipers do that, but if it's not in a defensive way, there's really no need to worry. I think this has to be probably one of the calmest green pit vipers I've ever seen in the wild. Or in captivity, for that matter. Alright, so we're gonna probably head home now for the night. It's pretty late, um, but yeah, gonna let this girl go. As you can see, she is incredibly mellow, even enjoying some chin pats. I'm kidding. She doesn't actually enjoy this, but she tolerates it, so <laughs> that's a good thing. I think I have to say, I like this species more than Pope's, despite that it doesn't have red eyes. Maybe it's just this individual, but if they're all like this, this is a really cool snake. Alright, enough of this. Let's let her go. Another difference between these and Pope's is if you look at the tail, Popes have a somewhat banded brown pattern on the tail, and these ones have more like a white-lipped pit viper, just that fat brown line, although this one is a lot thicker than that of a white-lipped viper.